Hello. Aging Gracefully is a program that deals with all the insults, <laughs> insults of aging. Um, insults medically is anything causing injuries and disease to the body or the body process. And as you age, there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Uh, most of these uh, insults and indignities of aging will kick into place. But how are you dealing with it? And that's what this program is all about. Today, we have a nutrition coach who will be talking to us about what we should eat, especially when you cross 50. At that point, especially for the women, the progesterone is no longer has really dwindled. So you really cannot burn a lot of the fats that you accumulate. So most people who are health freaks stay off cut off things like carbohydrates and deal with the uh, whole grain, change your lifestyle, stop eating sugar, stop, you know, but the laws are too many. If you ask me, ice cream, <laughs> I can never live without it. But don't ask me what I do to stay like this. Just listen to the nutrition coach, Kate Emiko, as she'll be discussing what we should eat when we go past 50. You're welcome. <music> Hello, Kate. Thank you. How are you? I'm great. You're welcome. Nutrition. What is nutrition all about? And being a nutrition coach. You do look the part. <laughs> nutrition has a lot to do with what we call FOOD. 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 And how your body accepts food. How your bo and when we talk about food, we're also talking about drinks, in quotes. So yes. Also, yes. How your body accepts food and how the food you eat affects your organs. Let me use that word, not just the body, affects your organs. So nutrition generally is the type of food you eat that affects your organs and how those organs perform. Food is broad. Yes, it is. So you can be eating, in quote, dead food, you can be eating living food. But when it comes to nutrition, we are more concerned about the nutrient dense food. Yes, not the nutrient empty food. Many years ago, growing up, we had pictures of what our grandmothers looked like, our grandfathers looked like. But today, most women in their 50s, Nigerian women have done very well, and Nigerian men. But a lot of them still have problem with the meat, a prosperous waistline. And some of them do a lot that, uh, with exercise, and so when it comes to exercise, most of them are lazy. And some who are doing exercise are not doing it well. Some of the coaches don't even know what to do or what to tell them. For those who are lazy, who would rather go on a diet, um, talk us through what we can eat to enable us to maintain a healthy waistline, a healthy life. When it comes to aging gracefully, yes. nutrition is key. Nutrition is key. 80% of what you look like, 80% of how you feel, has a lot to do with what goes into your mouth in terms of food and drink. And when it gets to that 45, 50, you do not start at that time. What you see at that time is pay time. Payback. Payback time, yeah. yes. So th the pot bellies you see at that time, they don't start overnight. It's an accumulative effect of how you've been living in the 20s, 20s, 30s, 40s. So 50, it catches up. So at that time, if you've not been living a healthy lifestyle, it becomes very, very difficult. And I mean really difficult. Because then all the organs in the body, they are weakening down. The estrogen. The progesterone. Yes, all those ones are playing their various parts. And you've not taken care of these things. So they start to clear. A protruded stomach is a sign of toxic load, not wealth at all. And it's as a result of wrong eating habits. Probably maybe not, okay, wrong food here, but eating habits. A lot of us tend to start eating on LD, surprisingly, even at the age of 35, because that is when, in quotes, money comes. So that is when overindulging comes. And that is when you're actually supposed to slow down on certain kinds of food. 30 and above, you should concentrate on all grains like brown rice, oats. If I should even be talking about sugar, 
And something about sugar, sugar is very omnipresent. So people might say they don't take white sugar, but they just add some sausages and a bottle of sweating soda for lunch or for, or for snack. That is sugar, because it's going to have the same reaction in your body. Yes. So from 35, 40, you should stay off processed food, because 80% of processed food contains sugar. Alcohol, no nutritional content, loads of sugar. It might even surprise you that even the red wine that the doctors advise us to take, the doctors advise us to take red wine, fine, because of reservatoil. But, but a quantity. lot of people abuse it. The quantity finish is supposed it. to be a unit. But they finish it. But they finish it. Quantity. Quantity. So then the effect is no longer there. So diet is very, very key. Lots of fruits and vegetables. Because as you age, your metabolism decreases. When you even get to 45, 50, your calorie intake is supposed to reduce to 400. So if you were on a calorie intake, for example, for a woman, 1,800 a day, you should now be taking 1,004. But surprisingly, that is when some women up up their calorie intake. <laughs> and timing of their eating is very important too. A lot of them are fine after the work, after stress, they get to about six, seven. That is when they sit in front of National Network News, bowl of white rice, fried plantain, all sorts of meats they've arrived. And of course, that food is not going to digest. And the result you now see is evident on the waistline. So diet is key. However, they are going to do it. However, you, but I still believe principles have to be followed. Once it's six o'clock, carbs. If I four, I tell my clients once it's four, processed carbs, overindulging in carbs. If I once you are forty-five, you should see carbs and just especially processed carbs and just throw away your eyes, and concentrate on fruits, vegetables, whole grains, fiber. Uh, Kids, we'll be right back. Uh, please don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. You're welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is Aging Gracefully. It's a program that deals with all the insults of aging and also educates you on how to deal with them and still age gracefully. Kate, um, sometimes those stringent diets are too tough to follow. Can you break it down and make it a lot easier on how mm -hmm. we can go? Because I do. I, anybody who is fat, I always say loves food, but not all the time because I know sometimes a lot of people have thyroid problems and yes, things like yes, that. Yes. It's been discovered that gluten, that yes. is not good for the, for the system, actually affects your knee, your joints. So how do we deal? Yes. So how do we deal with this? And also, like I said before, give us a simpler way. For balance. You have to pal on the anti-aging pyramid, food pyramid. Yes. It comes like a triangle. At the base, which is the largest part, yeah. you have the filtered water, which makes the largest part of the pyramid. Okay. Then after the filtered water, this is just a typical diet. What so is the filtered water? Hundred percent. That's water, pure water, okay. not sparkling water, not uh, a diet water. Okay. Uh, just or zero plain calorie water. Plain. Old water, fashioned, old fashioned bottle water. of water. Yes. Okay. For somebody that's not so active, eight glasses a day. But if you are active, exercising, and you do a lot of active job, you know, eight to ten glasses a day is okay, or more than that, depending on your activity. Then immediately after that, you have what you call the low glycemic index vegetables and fruits. And what low are these? Yes, I'm going to. Low glycemic index, this is the rate at which a particular carbohydrate triggers your sugar level. We have the high glycemic, we have the low glycemic. Of course, the high glycemic are foods that contain lots of sugar. Then we have the low glycemic, natural fructose, just the way God made it, that does not trigger your sugar level. Banana is a low glycemic food. Unlike what most people think, that oh, banana makes them put on, but it's the quantity that matters. That's why I tell my clients that weight loss is mathematics. Once you get your balance, your equation right, you find results. The glycemic, low glycemic index fruit, you have pineapple, you have watermelon, you have purple, I'm trying to zone into Afrocentric fruits that yes. you see around here. Yes. Then you have your low glycemic vegetables. You have the ugu, you have the spinach, you have the uh, garden eggs. In their natural state, of course, we should know that apple is different from apple pie. So when I say apple, I'm not saying apple pie. I mean plain apple just the way God made it to be. So that's follow, after water, you have the low glycemic fruits and vegetables. Then after the low glycemic fruits and vegetables, you have your old grains. 
the brown rice, the oats, then the, the uh, series, the all brown series, you know, and then all grain. They also have the all grain bread that has not been bleached out. Now, when it comes to all grains, the portion should just be a little. A little portion, like when it comes to 45, I'm planning a diet for 45, 50 years old, woman, not a man, because men are more active anyway. I would say a cup, a cup of brown rice, the regular old Chinese tea cup. And then your vegetables should surround it. Because at that 45, 50, carbs should decrease. And you should go more on veg and high on protein for muscle mass. Because from 35 years, bone mass begins to decrease. decrease. Yes. 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 So we really need to take our calcium, very important at that time too. Then after the low glycemic index, uh, the whole grain, you now have, of course, the protein-rich food, the good fats. Good fats, very essential. The olive oil, the plants, I call them plant fats, not animal fats. The olive oil, the flaxseed oil. Although we don't cook with flaxseed oil, it's better to take it directly. And then you have the omega-3 oil from fish also, which is very good at that time. And then you have your eggs, protein, very important. Although the yolk is high in cholesterol, but you can also balance it up. Then after that, I'm coming to what you said about having ice cream for weeks. Uh. After that, <laughs> after that, we have our lean meat. Lean meat. Now we've okay. Sorry, I didn't mention poultry. We've done fish. We've done white meat. After white meat on the pyramid, we are going thinner now. Yes. You know, it's a pyramid, yes. so we are going yes. thinner. Yes. Then we have our lean meat, and the lean meat on the pyramid is supposed to be twice a week. Twice a week. So your lean meats could be your, uh, your ram, your goat meat, or a little bit of your, just a little bit of your red meat. Although I don't advise red meat for 45, 40. I don't advise red meat. And then on the tip, very little, on the tip, you now have your sweets once a week. You have your sweets once a week. Because... The body cannot process that much sugar anymore. I actually, do ice cream maybe could be once yeah, a month. Yeah, you said it. Plenty. For some people, once ice cream day. is a regular diet, and ice cream is supposed to be a recreational food. There's what we call functional eating and recreational eating. You know one thing about food: food is a drug to be taken according to prescription. Just as there is drug Again, abuse. Uh, repeat that. Food is a drug to be taken according to prescription. Prescribed by who? Nutritionist. Okay. Your doctor. Okay. Not by your friend who owns a salon. Or not by the woman selling tomatoes. Who thinks and does not know exactly because we are talking about biology and chemistry here. Yeah. Yeah. So you need to ask your nutritionist or your doctor. Not they said banana is fattening. Did your doctor tell you that? Did your nutritionist tell you that? No, my friend. No. Because what works for Angela might Man not work for Blessing. For Food is a drug to be taken according to prescription. There's a prescription meant for a woman. There's a prescription meant for a man. Because the male and the female body, they are wired differently by a creator. And now give us the diet for a man, what a man who is about 50 would eat. A man burns calorie faster. Yes. They need higher calorie intake. Still falling on the same group of all grains, fruits, and vegetables. But they need to double the quantity compared to the women. So because it's the man does not mean he should be eating you know, what is not supposed to eat. And when it comes to the issue of men, your activity detects your diet. There is a diet made for a truck pusher, there is a diet made for a bank executive. A bank executive that decides to eat like a truck pusher will definitely grow pot belly. Because a truck pusher uses lots of energy, so it can go away with lots of carbs. Because carbohydrates miss energy giving food. So when you blame carbs, carbs has no fault. Because carbs say, use me, take me when you need the energy. But do not take me and sit in front of the television or in front of your computer. There are food you need for energy, and there are food that boost uh, brain cells. Fruit, vegetable, protein, if you are not so active. But if you are very active, then you can go freely on the carbs. So for the men, activity determines their diet. A footballer is not going to have the same diet. With a bank No, same thing for the women. You cannot afford to eat the same quantity with your husband. So, those some eat more than their husband. And the woman's body has passed through a lot of wear and tear before it reaches 50. So a lot of them now find it difficult. We'll be right back.
Okay, so you were talking about women who eat more than their you husbands. Eat more than their husbands. And, and at 50, 45, 50, the body has passed through a lot of wear and tear. So that is the time not to start eating unhealthy, let me put it that way. 35, 30, 35, 45, you should even have any to do with processed food. It should be a treat. But that is why you find most mothers eating their kids' leftover, like ice cream. And you know, there are always some people at that age who are emotional eaters. That is a topic on its own, bitch eating or emotional eating. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's a topic on its own. It's actually a form of depression. Emotional eating, they get angry and they feed on all the sweet chocolates. Chocolates, dark chocolates, when they talk of chocolates, of course, we have the dark chocolates, we have the dark chocolates very healthy. So I like to break so that people will know that when I need chocolates, I'm talking about the white with milk and sugar and all those stuff. Yes. So emotional eating is another topic, the broad topic, which of course, any woman that finds herself in emotional eating, she cannot always look good. And she will not be able to age gracefully. Because when it comes to premature aging, there is a recipe, sugar, for premature aging. And if you want to age gracefully, anything that looks like sugar or tastes like sugar, even the artificial ones, the zero calories of the world. Yes. No sugar, but sweeter than sugar. It adds worse than sugar. How about honey? Some people will say, I take honey. Well, when it comes to glycemic index, honey and sugar is 98, because it's rated between 1 to 100. 1 to 50 is the low glycemic index. 50 and above is the high glycemic index. So honey falls into, for, for of course, if a diabetic cannot take honey, then maybe we need to scale it down. Scale it down, down yes. Even, even, let me get a big scripture. The Bible says, do you love honey? It is sweet, but be mindful of the quantity because it might make you sick. Okay. So now, what do we do? Because at 50, there's so many women out there who really want to look good at 50, who will tell you they have tried everything that is not working. What would you say to them? They are trying diets. They are not trying lifestyle change. There's a difference between diet and lifestyle change. The key is lifestyle change. Starting at 50 might be too late, but it's not too late to start. So instead of trying different diets, that might not even be Afrocentric. Because lots of diets these women try are Caucasian diets. Diets they see on the internet. Diets their friends are brought in to them. Diets, and their friends that send those diets to them have been living healthy anyway. And you find out that most of those diets actually don't make them look good. No. They just, no. Uh, the, the diet diets give, give them what they call the fire brigade approach. For the first few weeks, they might be doing good on it. And because the body is not used to you are forcing the body to accept what it's not used to, they become sick, depressed, and frustrated. And the moment you and stop. And the moment you stop. Of course, you lose weight while you're on a diet. While you're on a diet, you lose weight. Once you stay off that diet, whatever diet you are So what I prescribe is a lifestyle change. It doesn't have to do with taste buds. At 45, at 30, 35, you forget everything about taste buds and think of nutrients dense food. It's no longer about the wants. It should be the needs. What does my body need to function? Not what I want. Because if you follow what I want, human wants are inside. Some people will tell you that it's not to say that they, uh, they have big bones, they have, uh, uh, they have big bones and all those things. And those are just consolation. We know the truth here. <laughs> of course, when you take your body max index, when you, when, you, when you take your fat percentage, there are means of taking this when you go and see a nutritionist or you see a doctor. Are, you know, in fact, when you stand in front of the mirror and you jump up and down, some flesh jump along with you. That is excess. So there's no same. Of course, genetics has a role to play. Genetics has a role to play. But like I tell people, that is like a gun loaded with a bullet. Your lifestyle pulls the trigger. And your lifestyle will also actually download, I mean, uh, remove the bullet to start pulling the trigger. So it's all about lifestyle change. There what? is no, I don't think there, I don't, I don't think there is shortcuts to these things. It's, it's, the earlier you accept the truth, that you cannot, you know, abuse the body with overeating or, um, excessive processed food, and then there's no magic pill for weight loss. How or easy is it for a man or a woman who has lived like that for up until they are 50, 53, to now say, I want to change? How easy is it? The body's to going to fight. It's not going to be easy. It takes two weeks to form a habit. The body will fight. 
So somebody in terms of uh, um, acne, in terms of weakness, in terms of, and that 50 for women, monopause, all flashes. So if you did not prepare, when the foundation is wrong, when the foundation is wrong, it takes the grace of God. So that is the time, the extra effort. In fact, that's the time I place most women just on smoothies. If you are crying, drinking it, no problem. If you are smiling, <laughs> drinking it, fine. But those are the things you just have to, because actually that is when even 45, 40 cancers start showing out. It might have been in the body. It might have been. It's an accumulative effect. It's not going to show overnight. So at that age, everything starts creeping out, creeping out of the body. So it's not a matter of taste void. How does it taste like? It's a matter of this is what I must do to age gracefully and to live long. And then exercise. You can't go. You exer even a cripple needs exercise. But that's what I do. But all this diet, I'm not, but I'm an exercise person. You are burning calories. <laughs> you are burning. Exercise. You are burning. Because it's all it's mathematics. Calorie in versus calorie out. But some eat and sit all day. What advice would you give now? Make it, I mean, you finished scaring us. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell us what exactly, just talk us through, talk somebody watching and says, okay, have gone the wrong route for the past 50 years. I want to go the, wrong route, the right route now. Talk us through a simpler process of taking baby steps. Okay, baby steps. Towards? Baby steps. <laughs> this is the time to, to embrace your fruits and vegetables. This is the time to love them. Baby steps. I'm not going to tell you to go on white rice. No baby steps in that. This is the time to do away with the processed Caucasian rice and go to your village and look for your local rice that will do you good. This is the time to reduce your portion drastically. And this is the time to fill on water. Still tight, but those are gradual steps. This is the time to do more fruities, I mean smoothies. If you don't like eating the fruit itself, but I will not advise juice even for 50 and above, because you need a lot of fiber. You need a lot of fiber. And this time to start taking walks. I didn't say vigorous strenuous exercise, because at 50, the body is settling down. So taking walks gradually. Gradually, you cannot compare yourself with a friend that started exercising when she was 25 years old. And then you go with her to the gym and you want to do one hour on the treadmill, you collapse if you've never done it before. So baby steps, 10 minutes walk, 15 minutes walk, lots of water. Some people, they've not taken water you know, seriously only when they're having their bath or brushing their teeth. But if it doesn't taste well for you, add a bit of lemon. Or even add a, squeeze a bit of orange, real orange. I'm not talking about the artificial, real orange. And to flavor the water a bit on your own. But this is time to increase your water intake, increase your intake of fruits and vegetables. And then add in 10 minutes walk, gradually you progress. And then a very important thing a lot of women and men miss out, supplements. Maybe that might be a topic for another day, but supplements are essential. Even on the pyramid, the pyramid, there is a slot for anti-aging supplements. I'll be right back. You're welcome back. So, um, now that you have told us the baby steps to take, what is the one word that you have been hard on my viewers? <laughs> that you've told them the truth. Say something to them. Well, it's never too late to start. It's never, never too late to start. You can start right now, or you can even start tomorrow. But you need to start eating right. Not eating well, eating right. If you're 50, like she said, it's not too late to start to look good. Men are moved by what they see. Women are moved by what they hear. You need to keep your marriage, so you have to keep looking good. So if you look at your waistline, start naked in the mirror. I tell you to women, look at yourself. If you like what you see, then don't take it seriously. But if you don't like what you see, it's about time to get up from that couch and take what she has said seriously, as I wish you graceful aging uh, for the rest of your life. Until I come your way another time, my name is uh, Yudi. 
God bless you and you have a great week ahead of you. Thank you.